Shalom, this is Yah is Magnified and I'm back with another informative video. Today's video is titled, Is it really her child support case against you? But before I tackle this subject as always, I must state for the record, I'm not a lawyer, I do not practice law, and I do not pretend to. All my videos are for informational and educational purposes only. They're all facts and all truth. Nothing more, nothing less. So with that being said, let's get to it. Oh yeah guys, but before I proceed forward, I need you all to hit that like button. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And also hit that notification bell so you all can be notified as I drop these powerful videos. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so now, for all those who are currently under a support obligation, or those who the agency is trying to establish a support obligation against you, we all know that it was initiated by what? By the custodial parent, who is usually a female, went down to the agency and applied for services, okay? But in order for one to apply for services, they must do what, guys? They must fill out an application, okay? So now, as we have on the screen, we're coming from El Paso County, Texas, okay? The reason why I'm doing Texas is because there's individuals who's trying to teach you all that child support is in fact the child's mom case against you. So we're going to find out if that statement is true or not, okay? So now, let's go over the application. It reads, custodial parent application for 4D services. So again, guys, this is simply a what? An application. For what? 4D services. That's it, that's all. But as you all know, and I continue to stress, that when you're entering into these child support hearings, they, you are in fact being sued, okay? So we're gonna find out, is it your child's mom who is suing you for support? And if and if it is your child's mom who is suing you for support, then that makes it her case. But if it's not your child's mom who is suing you in these cases, then it makes it someone else's case, okay? So we're gonna see if it's your child's mom who is in fact actually suing you in these 4D cases. Okay, but let's pick it up at the top. It states what, guys? Please, right here. Please, right? It states, please complete and sign the application. So again, you have to do what? Complete and sign the application because that's all this is, guys. It's simply an application. Then it states, there will be no cost to apply for services. You will pay a $35 fee for each year that you receive more than $550 in child support collections, the fee will be automatically deducted from the child support payment. Current and former TANF and foster care cases are exempt from this fee. Okay, guys? But now, so let's stroll up because this is where most people get confused because it reads what? Right here, guys. Will opening a child support case propose a family violence risk for you and or your children with the other parent. Again, so when you see that a case will be open, majority of people are thinking that the child's mom is the one opening the case. But we're going to see if that's true or not because it doesn't say who will open the case. It's just asking, will it will open in a case uh, pose family risk of injury or harm to you or your child? That's it. That's all. And it further asks the same question again for anyone who's having like other relatives that could cause risk or harm to the parent, the custodial parent or the child. That's it. That's all, guys. Okay? But it doesn't say who will open a child support case. It just says, will open in a child support case pose family pose a family risk or harm for you and your child. That's it. That's all, guys. But before we proceed forward, let's go over the definition for the word application so we can see what, what in fact, the application truly is. So now let's go there. Okay, so now, as you all can see, we are, in fact, coming from the Black Law Dictionary. We're going to pick this up at the top where it states application, and it simply states, a putting to, placing before, preferring a request or petition to or before a person. So again, guys, when you're filling out an application, an application is simply a request. That's it. That's all. To further prove that, let's go to the next line, and it states what? The act of making a request for something. That's it. That's all, guys. So when a custodial parent, majority of the time, is the child's mom, when she go down to the agency and apply for services, she's simply requesting for Title IV D services, okay? But now, after she requests for these services and she fill out the application, let's find out what happens next. So since we're dealing in the state of Texas, let's go back to the state of Texas to find out what happens next after the child's mom fills out the application. Let's go there. Okay, so now, as you all can see, we are, in fact, coming from where? Frequently asked questions about child support. And we're coming from where? The Attorney General for Texas, all right? 
And it states what? Mission statement. We're not going to read that. We're going to go down to what happens after they apply for services, right? So now let's continue to go down. I think page six should be good enough. Five. Six, right here, guys. It says, how do TANF recipients seek child support? It states, to receive TANF benefits through the Texas Health and Human Services Commission, recipients must cooperate with the Office of Attorney General's efforts to identify the children's non-custodial parent and collect child support. Then it states what, guys? TANF recipients must assign to the state their rights to what? To child support collections. Okay? So they assign to the state their rights to child support collection. That's it. That's all, guys. So now once they petition for services, there's the whole point of petitioning for services for the child's mom to do what? To sign over her rights. Once she signed up her rights, it's no longer her collecting support. It is now what? The corporate state of Texas collecting support like any other corporate state to start collecting support. That's the purpose of the services, guys. If you all remember, I did a video titled what? The third party intervener. In child support cases, there's always a third party intervener, which is in fact what? Which is the corporate state. That's it. That's all, guys. So for anyone to tell you all that it's the child's mom case, that's a lie, right? And to further prove that, and the person who's telling you all that it is the child's mom case that's pursuing after you, let's go to his case and let's find out who is pursuing after him. So without further ado, let's go there. Okay, so now, someone may say, well, you is magnified. What you just read says TANF. But what about Title 4D? And I will simply say, well, they're basically the same, okay? The only difference between TANF and 4D is this. TANF is recuperation of taxpayer funds, meaning that uh, the child's mom is receiving public assistance and the taxpayers are paying the child's mom directly through the state's treasury, okay? So what the, child, so what the agency would do is the agency will have the child's mom come down and sign her rights over to the state, right, for collections. So the state would then take those collection rights through the application that the child's mom paid and then do a search for the child's father to do what? To establish paternity. So once they find the child's father, they bring him into the court, okay? Okay, the state brings him into the court to establish paternity. And then after the paternity is, is established, then the state will proceed forward with what? To support collection activities, meaning that the judgment will make the judge will make a ruling against the father and have the father rec uh, repay the state's uh, TANF benefits that the child's mom received. Okay, that's the, between TANF and 4D. But 4D is simple. 4D is basically to prevent uh, women from receiving TANF services. Okay, so. To prevent them from re from receiving tandem services, they will simply have the child's mom sign her rights over as well. The same thing that happened in the Title 4A case. The Title 4D agency will also have the child's mom sign her rights over, okay? And then after she do that, then the Title 4D agency will then petition the court to establish paternity. And after the paternity is established, then the Title 4D agency will then what? Do what? Get an order against the father. And then the father is now paying... Uh, child support through the agency, which the agency would then take its percentage out of and then turn it around and pay the child's mom, okay? Same thing in this case right here, okay? Since Excel West, aka YCO Bay, is telling people that child support is uh, the case, is the mom's case, then let's see who's coming after him in his own case. So now we see that Excel West the third, right? His child's mom name is Raina, right? So let's see if Raina, the one that's coming after him. Okay, because it states what? If you look at the clause number, right? The clause number says D1AG. That AG stands for, guys, Attorney General. Clearly let us know that it's the Attorney General's case. At the top, right, it says right here, guys. At the top, it, it clearly says what, guys? OAG number. It doesn't say Rainer's number. It says OAG number. It lets us know that this is what? An Office of the Attorney General's number. Why? Because the child's mom signed her rights over to the third party intervener. I also did a video titled the third party intervener, which I will post in the description box so you all can go back and watch that video as well. Okay, but then it further states what, guys? Let's read it. This, is a, this was a motion for enforcement of child support, okay? And it states what? Pick it up at one, guys. The Office of Attorney General, right? Representing the state of Texas files this plea in pursuance to Texas rule Texas Family Code uh, 231. So again, 
the office of attorney general is the one that moved the court, okay? Why? Because it's the office of the attorney general's case. It doesn't say his child's mom, Raina, moved the court underneath that code. No, it clearly states the office of the attorney general, the state of Texas, okay? So again, guys, this is just more evidence that it is in fact the state's case, okay? It's the agency's case against you. It's not the child's mom case. It's never been the child's mom case because the child's mom simply did what? What I told you all from the beginning. She applied for a service. And after she applied for a service, it required her to do what? To surrender her support rights. After she surrendered her support rights, it removes her out the way. And then the third party intervener takes over and they initiates the case. So it's their case against you, which is the, which is the Office of Attorney General in most cases. And in most states, it's the Child Support Enforcement Agency. That's it. That's all. And to further prove that, let's continue reading Texas Family Code 231. Okay, let's so now they all can see we are, in fact, coming from Family Code Title V from the state of Texas, right? And it states what? The parent-child relationship and the suit affecting the parent-child relationship. Subtitle D, right? And it states what? Administrative services. We know that child support is, in fact, an administrative agency. That's why it states what? Under Chapter 231, it has what? Title 4D services. Why? Because Title 4D is in itself is an administrative services, okay? That your child's mom or the custodial parent went down and assigned their support collections rights over to, okay? But let's continue. Then it states what? Subchapter A. That clearly states what? Administration of the Title 4D program. But then it states what? Section 231.001. Designation of the Title 4D agency. The Office of the Attorney General is designated as the state's Title 4D agency, okay? So it's the Office of the Attorney General that's coming after you underneath the disguise of the Title 4D agency. But let's continue. Then it states what? The development of statewide integrated systems for child support, medical support, and dental support. What, guys? Enforcement. Okay, so it's the Title 4D program that does the enforcing. Okay, the child's mom signs her rights over in order for them to enforce. And once she signs her rights over, it no longer becomes her child support case. It becomes the Title 4D child support case ran by what? The Office of the Attorney General for the state of Texas. Okay, to further prove that, people can say, well, uh, your child's mom can take you off. That is true. To further prove that, let's go to Excel West case again to see did his child's mom take him off. Let's go there. Okay, so now, as you all can see, this is in fact the letter that was filed into the uh, District Court of Travis County, okay? It's coming from what? The District Clerk of Travis County, right? Travis County Courthouse Complex. And it was dated July 2nd, 2019. And it states, Excel West III. So remember, in 2016 and, and 2017, he was telling everybody he was off support. But we see in 2019, his child's mom just taking him off. But let's continue. It states what? Excel West III. Case number right there. Then it states what? Dear Excel West III. This office is in receipt of screenshots with the screenshot numbers. Then it states what? Referencing Miss Raina's request to withdraw from services. Please note, calls still must be paid. Otherwise, a court order is needed for our office to waive calls of court. Attaches a copy of the court order for your review. So again, guys, she can, if the child's mom can associate when she went down there and she would apply for services, so she has a right to association, right? So she has a right to associate whom she want to associate with and who she don't want to associate with. So when she initially went down there, she associated and applied for services, right? But in 2019, she went down there and took them off, right? And she decided not to associate anymore, right? So that gave her her, her support collection rights back, okay? And removed it from the agency. But then she went back down there and did what, guys? She went back down there and put them on again. But before I go back and show y'all that he's still on support, let's continue on with the freedom of association so you all can see what I mean by that. Let's go there. Okay, so now, as you all can see, we are, in fact, coming from constitution.finelaw.com, okay? And we're going to pick this up where it states freedom of association. And it reads... The Supreme Court has long held that the First Amendment's protection of free speech, assembly, and petition logically extends to include a freedom of association. Generally, this means we have the freedom to associate with others who have similar political, religious, or cultural beliefs. This separate freedom grew out of challenges to state laws that burdened the NAACP and was challenged by security investigations of the Communist Party. So again, guys, freedom of association is protected underneath the First Amendment of the Constitution, okay? So, like I said before, she has a right to 
if anyone's child's mom has a right to go down there and what petition for support or file a, file a, so file an application for support okay and after they file an application for support they are now in association with the agency but they can also refuse that association and what withdraw their application of support okay which is happening why seals case to further prove that now let's go and see that she further go back down there and reassociate herself with the agency again so without further ado let's go there okay so now the letter that i showed you guys of his child's mom closing the case was dated july 2nd 2019 right so now we see that this document was filed to the court case in Travis County on March the 5th, 2020, which is in fact a what? An order to appear and show cause. Same case number, same parties of interest and everything else, right? So that means what? The child's mom went right, went right back down to the agency and did what? Reassociated herself by doing what? Petitioning or applying for services again by filling out what? An application. And then once she fills out the application, she signed her support rights over to the agency. And guess what? The agency now open the case and starts its case pursuing after the father for strict enforcement methods in order for them to receive child support. So again, guys, it's not the uh, child's mom case. It is, in fact, the... um. The agency's case because it's the agency pursuing after you guys, okay? So that's all I'm going to do for today. If you all need my help, hit me up in my email at yahismagnified at gmail.com. Let's get this right wisdom, this right knowledge, and this right understanding. Also, guys, be careful who you guys are listening to. Like I told you before, there's plenty of scam artists on YouTube. Be careful, guys. I cannot stress this enough. Remember, when I was doing this, there was no Yaz Magnified. But now that I'm here, expect the truth, guys, and I will bring you all the truth. So... That's all I'm going to do for today. Cop that merch. And with that being said, I say shalom.